Hi everyone. Welcome to Ethics Computer. Ethics Computer में आपका स्वागत है. Today topic is introduction of computer. Shall we start now? Firstly show a syllabus to cover a topic. Introduction computer. Evolution of computers. Classification of computers. Advantages and disadvantages of computers. Similarities difference between computer and human. A computer system. Components of a computer system. Summary. Should we start? Introduction computer. The word computer is derived from the word compute. Compute means to calculate. The computer was originally defined as a superfast calculator. It could solve complex arithmetic and scientific problems at a very high speed. But nowadays in addition to handling complex arithmetic computations, computers perform many other tasks like accepting, sorting, selecting, moving, comparing various types of information. They also perform arithmetic and logical operations on alphabetic, numeric, and other types of information. This information provided by the user to the computer is data. The information in one form which is presented to the computer is the input information or input data. Information in another form is presented by the computer after performing a process on it. This information is the output information or output data. The set of instructions given to the computer to perform various operations is called the computer program. The process of converting the input data into the required output form with the help of the computer program is called data processing. The terms hardware and software are almost always used in connection with the computer. The hardware The hardware is the machinery itself. It is made up of the physical parts or devices of the computer system like the electronic integrated circuits, ICs magnetic storage media, and other mechanical devices like input devices, output devices, etc. All these various hardware are linked together to form an effective functional unit. The various types of hardware used in computers have evolved from vacuum tubes of the first generation to ultra-large scale integrated circuits of the present generation. The software the computer hardware itself is not capable of doing anything on its own. It has to be given explicit instructions to perform the specific task. The computer program is the one that controls the processing activities of the computer. The computer thus functions according to the instructions written in the program. The software mainly consists of these computer programs, procedures, and other documentation used in the operation of a computer system. Software is a collection of programs that utilize and enhance the capability of the hardware. Evolution of computers The computers of today are vastly different in appearance and performance as compared to the computers of earlier days. But where did this technology come from and where is it heading? To fully understand the impact of computers on today's world and the promises they hold for the future, it is important to understand the evolution of computers. The first generation The first generation computers made use of vacuum tube technology, punched cards for data input, punched cards and paper tape for output, machine language for writing programs, magnetic tapes and drums for external storage. Currently we are sure technology of computer to used in a first generation. First generation of computer The first computer is Abacus. The Abacus, which emerged about 5000 years ago in Asia Minor and is still in use today, allows users to make computations using a system of sliding beads arranged on a rack. Early merchants used Abacus to keep trading transactions. The second generation. In the second generation computers, vacuum tube technology was replaced by transistorized technology. Size of the computers started reducing, assembly language started being 
used in place of machine language the concept of the stored program emerged, high-level languages were invented. This was the generation of transistorized computers. Vacuum tubes were replaced by transistors. As a result, the size of the machines started shrinking. These computers were smaller, faster, more reliable, and more energy efficient. The first transistorized computer was TX0. The first large-scale machines that took advantage of the transistor technology were the early supercomputers, Stretch by IBM and Lark by Sperry Rand. These machines were mainly developed for atomic energy laboratories. Typical computers of the second generation were the IBM 1400 and 7000 series, Honeywell 200, and General Electric. Shown on a photo in a right hand to use technology of computer. The third generation computers were characterized by use of integrated circuits, the phenomenal increase in computation speed, substantial reduction in size and power consumption of the machine's use of magnetic tapes and drums for external storage design of operating systems and new higher level languages commercial production of computers. The general features of the fourth generation computers were use of very large scale integration, the invention of microcomputers, introduction of personal computers, networking, fourth generation languages. The third generation computers made use of integrated circuits that had 10 to 20 components on each chip. This was small scale integration, SSI. The fourth generation realized large scale integration, LSI, which could fit hundreds of components on one chip and very large scale. Integration, VLSI, which squeezed thousands of components on one chip. The Intel 4004 chip, located all the components of a computer, central processing unit, memory, input, and output controls, on a single chip, and microcomputers were introduced. Higher capacity storage media like magnetic disks were developed. Fourth generation languages emerged and application software started becoming popular. The fifth generation. Defining the fifth generation of computers is somewhat difficult because the field is still in its infancy. The computers of tomorrow would be characterized by artificial intelligence at an example of AL as expert systems. Computers could be developed which could think and reason in much the same way as humans. Computers would be able to accept spoken words as input, voice recognition. Classification of computers Computers are broadly classified into two categories depending upon the logic used in their design is analog computers. In analog computers, data is recognized as continuous measurement of physical properties like voltage, speed, pressure, etc. Readings on a dial or graphs are obtained as the output, x. Voltage, temperature, pressure can be measured in this way. So next is digital computers. These are high-speed electronic devices. These devices are programmable. They process data by way of mathematical calculations, comparison, sorting, etc. They accept input and produce output as discrete signals representing the high, on, or low, off, voltage. State of electricity. Numbers, alphabets, symbols are all represented as a series of ones and os. Digital computers are further classified as general purpose digital computers and special purpose digital computers. General purpose computers can be used for many applications like accounts, payroll, data processing, etc. Special purpose computers are used for a specific job like those used in automobiles, microwaves, etc. Another classification of digital computers is done on the basis of their capacity to access memory and size like small computers, 
I, microcomputers, microcomputers are generally referred to as personal computers, PCs. They have the smallest memory and less power. They are widely used in day-to-day -day applications like office automation, and professional applications, X, PC at Pentium, etc. 2. Notebook and laptop computers. These are portable in nature and are battery operated. Storage devices like CDs, floppies, etc., and output devices like printers can be connected to these computers. Notebook computers are smaller in physical size than laptop computers. However, both have powerful processors, support graphics, and can accept mouse-driven input. In a right hand show a image of microcomputers and laptop. 3. Handheld computers. These types of computers are mainly used in applications like the collection of field data. They are even smaller than notebook computers. Hybrid computers. Hybrid computers are a combination of analog and digital computers. They combine the speed of analog computers and the accuracy of digital computers. They are mostly used in specialized applications where the input data is in an analog form i.e. measurement. This is converted into digital form for further processing. The computers accept data from sensors and produce output using conventional input-output devices. Mini computers. Mini computers are more powerful than microcomputers. They have higher memory capacity and more storage capacity with higher speeds. These computers are mainly used in process control systems. They are mainly used in applications like payrolls, financial accounting, computer-aided design etc. X. VAX. PDP-11. Mainframe computers. Mainframe computers are very large computers that process data at very high speeds of the order of several million instructions per second. They can be linked into a network with smaller computers, microcomputers and with each other. They are typically used in large organizations, government departments etc. X. IBM 4381, CDC, supercomputers. A. Supercomputer is the fastest, most powerful and most expensive computer which is used for complex tasks that require a lot of computational power. Supercomputers have multiple processors which process multiple instructions at the same time. This is known as parallel processing. These computers are widely used in very advanced applications like weather forecasting, processing, geological data etc. X. Cray 2, NEC 500, PARAM. Advantages of computers. Speed. The speed of a computer is measured in terms of the number of instructions that it can perform or execute in a second. The speeds of computers are measured in milliseconds, 10 to 3 seconds, microseconds, 10 asterisk 6 seconds, and nanoseconds, 10 to 9 seconds. Computers are super fast machines and can process millions of instructions per second. Smaller computers can execute thousands of instructions per second while the more complex machines can execute millions of instructions per second. Accuracy. Computers are very accurate. They are capable of executing hundreds of instructions without any errors. They do not make mistakes in their computations. They perform every calculation with the same accuracy. Efficiency. The efficiency of computers does not decrease with age. The computers can perform repetitive tasks with the same efficiency any number of times without exhausting their selves. Even if they are instructed to execute millions of instructions, they are capable of executing them all with the same speed and efficiency without exhaustion. Storage capability. Computers are capable of storing large amounts of data in their storage devices. 
These devices occupy very little space and can store millions of characters in condensed forms. These storage devices typically include floppy disks, tapes, hard disks, CDs etc. The data stored on these devices can be retrieved and reused whenever it is required in future. Versatility. Computers are very versatile. They are capable not only of performing complex mathematical tasks of science and engineering, but also other non-numerical operations fielding airline reservation, electricity bills, database management etc. Limitations of computers. Although the computers of today are highly intelligent and sophisticated they have their own limitations. The computer cannot think on its own, since it does not have its brain. It can only do what it has been programmed to do. It can execute only those jobs that can be expressed as a finite set of instructions to achieve a specific goal. Each of the steps has to be clearly defined. The computers do not learn from previous experience nor can they arrive at a conclusion without going through all the intermediate steps. However, the impact of computers on today's society is phenomenal and they are today an important part of society. Similarities and difference between human and computer The computer is a very effective and efficient machine that performs several activities in a few minutes, which otherwise would have taken several days if performed naturally. Besides, there would have been a doubt about the accuracy, finish etc. The computer may be faster, more accurate but it cannot compete with the human brain. However, there are some similarities between the human and the computer which would make the computer more understandable. A computer system Any system is defined as a group of integrated parts which are designed to achieve a common objective. Thus, a system is made up of more than one element or part, where each element performs a specific function and where all the elements, parts, are logically related and are controlled in such a way that the goal, purpose, of the system is achieved. A computer is made up of many integrated elements like the central processing unit, the input and output devices and the storage devices. Each of these units performs a specific task. However, none of them can function independently on their own. They are logically related and controlled to achieve a specific goal. When they are thus integrated they form a fully-fledged computer system. Components of a computer system The basic parts of a computer system are Input unit, the central Processing unit, output unit Summary A computer is a fast and accurate data processing system that accepts data, performs various operations on the data, can store data and process the data with the set of instructions given to it. The data is the information provided by the user to the computer and the set of instructions to operate on data as the computer program. The hardware of the computer is the physical parts of the machine like monitor, keyboard, disks etc. Whereas the software is the various programs, procedures and other documentation which is used to operate the hardware efficiently. Classification of computers is done based on the logic used in their design as analog and digital computers. Analog computers recognize data as a continuous movement of a physical property. Digital computers recognize data as a series of discrete signals representing high or low voltage states of electricity. Hybrid computers are a combination of analog and digital computers. Digital computers are further classified according to their speed and capacity of memory and size as microcomputers, 
notebooks or laptops, minicomputers, mainframes and supercomputers. The typical characteristics of the computer are its superfast speed, the accuracy of every calculation, and its consistent efficiency. It has tremendous storage capacity and can store large volumes of data. It is versatile in the sense that it can be used in a vast range of applications. From complex scientific problems to a child's game. A system is a group of integrated elements that are logically related to achieving the goal of the system. Each element performs a specific task assigned to it. A computer system is made up of input unit, which accepts input data, the central processing unit. This is made up of the control unit, the arithmetic and logic unit and the primary storage unit. This unit controls the entire computer system. Output unit. This unit gives the results of the computation to the user. The evolution or development of computers is characterized by generations of computers. The first generation had very large and complex machines which made use of vacuum tube technology. The invention of transistors in the second generation reduced the size of the computers. The concept of the stored program emerged, as well as higher level languages, was introduced. The third generation was characterized by integrated circuits and commercial production of computers. The fourth generation saw the invention of microcomputers with very large-scale integration, networking and the introduction of personal computers. The fifth or the present generation has seen advances in parallel processing and superconductor technologies. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe our YouTube channel for more videos. Keep supporting of ethics computer.